Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be doing part one of our game development series. So what we've got here in the scene is just a very small part of the game. So we've just literally got the floor, a directional light and then some invisible walls to stop people from going outside the scene. So first thing first, we're going to create the texture for the floor. So if you use Photoshop, then I'm going to be using Photoshop, but you can also use GIMP, which I'll put a link in the description for, and you can use that. It's going to be exactly the same kind of techniques, so it's all fine. So all I've got here is four different layers. One is for the tarmac, which has a slight gradient on it. Uh, one's for the pavement, which is like a white grid with little gray squares in it. And then we've got the yellow lines and the white lines for all the road markings and everything. So to create the tarmac with a slight bit of noise on it, literally I've just created a new layer and gone and used the fill tool and just filled it in black. And then I've gone filter and noise and then add noise. And you can just, just get it right. Because we are using quite a far away camera from the road, it's just to kind of make a bit of texture on it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be precise. We're not gonna be using like a first person camera to be looking at it close up or anything. So that's pretty much all I've done for the tarmac. And then for the pavement, and what I've done is I've created a new layer and just completely pasted it in white. And then I duplicated it by going Control and J or con Command and J on the Mac. And then I have gone Control and T and then I've scaled it to exactly 10% of what it was wide. And then if you hide the original layer, that's going to be the thickness of the road. So you can place them wherever you want as long as we're only going to be using T junctions. In the future, I'm going to release tutorials on how to make the other junctions, but for these tutorials, I'm just going to create T junctions using give way. So you can duplicate that again by pressing Control and J, and you can add another one. And then say you wanted to create a proper grid, you can press Control and E to merge down onto the previous layer. And then if we Control and J again, and then Control and T to transform that, we can rotate it all the way around and we'll have a nice little grid there. One final thing that because I can only use T junctions in these tutorials, we're going to be just removing those ones there. And then we can press Control and E to add that to our group. And you can use the magic wand tool here and just select the white areas. And then on our initial white layer, we can select it over here and then press delete and then we'll have our roads clear with the tarmac showing below. Obviously you can add another row in wherever you want, but that's all you're gonna need for now. And then to do the grid on the pavement, all I've done is just had a light gray area and then just use the line tool and just added it and duplicated it all the way across and then done exactly the same. If you keep the initial road layout, you can use that to delete the pavement texture as well. And then finally, once, I've, once you've got all of that done, you can add your yellow lines and white lines by going around and just drawing them across. And then with the white lines, you can just duplicate them all the way along and do dashed lines. So you can get it exactly how you want. The only thing that I would say is initially, I'm, I'm going to do this based on the sizes that I'm going to give you throughout the tutorials. So if you want to use the ones that I've already created, I'm going to put them online and you can use them. Otherwise, if you want to create them on your own, um, just make sure that you use the same sizes for now. It will be easier, but you can you can upscale all of the things that I've created in this tutorial in these tutorials. But if you use the image size of 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, then it'll be a good quality when you actually put it into the game, because you can't have textures any larger than 4,092 by 4,092 anyway. And then let me just remove these, and you can save it as a Photoshop document, a PSD. Or you could, all, you could also save it as a PNG or a JPEG if you wanted as well, but I'm going to save them as PSDs. And then you simply have to drag them into Unity, and you'll have them looking like this. The only things I've changed here is I've changed repeat to clamp here because we don't need it to repeat. We just need it to be just the one image. Now inside of Unity, what I've done is created some uh, directories. We've got materials and a textures directory. The textures are just inside the materials to make it tidier. And then I've also created a material for the map as well. Drag the texture onto the onto the texture of the material, and that's all I'm going to do for this material. And then I've also just saved the scene into a scenes project scenes directory there. And then inside the scene, I've created a floor, which is just by creating a cube 
and then scaling it 25 by 1 by 25 and then just turning off cast shadows on the on the mesh renderer because it doesn't need to cast any shadows but it will need to receive shadows because I'm going to be adding a directional light and then we've added our map material by dragging it onto here like this and then that's it for the floor. The directional light is just by going create and then directional light or game object create other directional light. All I've done is added a slight blue tint, uh, not much at all, and then I've also added hard shadows so we can have all of our humans and zombies walking around giving off shadows and the buildings will as well. Finally I've made the invisible walls and that's simply because of the sizes of everything, because of the scales, if you use exactly the same scales that I've used then all of the numbers will be the same. All you have to do is create four walls and position them. As long as their scale is 1 by 5 by 25, you can position them 13 off of the center and then make sure that you create a parent object for that. I would suggest doing that first, actually. If you uh, double click on floor to make sure you're going to be right in the center and then game object create empty. And that's all I've done for the floor uh, parent there. And then I've added all the walls in and if you add them in and then set all their scales, it'll be relative to their parent and you can get them exactly how you want them around the edge. As long as they're going to be covering all of the edges, it doesn't really matter what kind of height they are or, or thickness, to be honest, as long as you have them only just touching the edges. That's going to be it for setting up the scene. So that's part one of this tutorial. Check out the next part and I'll see you in that. Video.